说的事实，是有政策的，它是也是有阶段性的。那现在我们的孩子去了美国，王思我们上That's、uh, Germany at the end of 1938. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with the term Kristallnacht? Yeah, I heard、okay. about that. That was November, November, the night of November 8th, Eight. I believe,、yeah. 1938, when the Nazis went、uh, to all the Jewish shops and smashed their windows.、Mm -hmm. In Berlin, we lived in a Jewish neighborhood in an apartment building, but on the ground floor of this apartment building, there were a lot of Jewish shops. And they were all smashed. Now I don't remember this, of course, as a four and a half year old. I don't, I cannot remember this incident. But for many years, even as I grown up, I was already a grown up,、uh, and and was in graduate school. Whenever I heard the sound of broken glass, I had a very abnormal reaction to the sound of broken glass. And I.、Uh, One time, discussed this with a psychiatrist, and he questioned where I came from, and he thought this may be、uh, the, the the experience、uh, that I experienced as a four and a four and a half year old somehow did register. And today, in the United States, we would call this post post traumatic distress、uh, syndrome. P、uh, PDSD or something like that. Today, I think they have a name for that. But、uh, then, then of course uh, uh, we left. My father, my father was a Viennese. He grew up in Vienna and studied in Vienna, and he was a、um, a chemist, an academic chemist. But、uh, near the、uh, the 1938. When Hitler marched into Austria, I think it was in March 1938. My father, being an Austrian, he was also now exposed to.、Uh, he he lost his job in Berlin. <coughs> he he、uh, worked in a sugar factory in Berlin as a, as a chemist. He lost his job, and、uh, near the、uh, after Kristallna, he went into hiding. They were looking for him,、uh, and、uh, he he went into hiding. And then my mother,、uh, and that's when my parents decided that they would that they needed to leave leave Germany. That、uh, there was no no other way but but to leave Germany. And my mother went around to、uh, travel agencies, and she found out that the city of Shanghai. Was an open port. That meant that anybody you arrived in Shanghai by a ship, and you get off the ship and got into a rickshaw and went into town. Nobody checked your passport. Nobody checked your luggage. There was no custom control. So actually, your family, except your parents and you, moved out to Shanghai, who stay alive. Others are all killed, right? Yes, yes. We I, we only had a small family.、Uh, as, a, as I said, my all four of my grandparents were killed. My mother had a sister. She had, as a teenager, she had moved to、uh, at that time Palestine before it was Israel. So she grew up in in Palestine. Uh, my mother also had a brother, but he died as a young man. Uh, so uh... Uh, the four of us, we went back to to Shanghai for about two weeks. Not to Shanghai. We went. To, we took a tour of、uh, the the Yangtze River, and we spent oh about、uh, four or five days in Shanghai. That was a very dramatic experience, at least for me. 
Of course, we went back to the, to the ghetto, and uh, the house that I lived in was exactly the same as it was 60 years before. An amazing experience. Would you please tell us more about that visit? That visit? Yeah. Well, it was just a very emotional visit to, to go back to where you grew up. Uh, we went into the, uh, we went of course back into the Shanghai ghetto and I found the house that I lived in and the, the people who lived there in that house were wondering what we were doing there. I happened to have a photo album with me with a picture of myself standing in front of the house. Once they saw that picture they knew exactly who we were and they even invited us up into the rooms that we lived in 60 years before. Very gracious, very gracious people. So, so what's your impression on Shanghai after your visit? Well, Shanghai, it's, I mean, it's, it's completely unrecognizable. It's such a large and metropolis city now. But the Chinese government is preserving the Shanghai ghetto. At, at least 10 years ago, they were. There, uh, there is still a, uh, a there's a Jewish museum in the ghetto. And earlier this year, they even uh, uh, opened, they uh, they built a uh, a copper wall of, uh, with all the names of all the people who lived in Shanghai carved into the wall. That's part part of the Jewish museum. And that's being being preserved by the uh, by the current by the government. I believe it's the federal government and I don't, I don't know what the political who who is uh, paying for this. I'm I'm not sure. <clears throat> but uh, whether it's federal or just the city of Shanghai, I don't know. And uh, just outside of the ghetto, there is a, a park. In those days, it was called a, a Wayside Park. The street that we lived on was called Wayside Road. Today, it's called Ho Shanglu. But those days, it was called Wayside Road. And the park across the street is called Wayside Park. And there is a, uh, um, there's also a plaque. Uh, uh, dedicated to the Jewish community who lived there uh, during the war, during the uh, during the Second World War. So, Peter, have you ever tried to do something to boost the Jewish and the Chinese relations? Um, I I belong to a uh, for about a year. I belong to an organization here in New Jersey that's called the Holocaust Council. And uh, they take uh, Holocaust survivors and they send us out to, to uh, talk about our experience, our Holocaust experience, to different schools. So about once every two weeks, I uh, give a brief talk at a uh, high school or an elementary school to young people, uh, to students and uh, describe my experience in, in Shanghai, growing up in, in Shanghai. So that is probably the most uh, active role that I play in, in uh, describing my experience with China or my experience within the city of Shanghai.